Well, we hope before the day's over that the sun will come out. You see the history of uh, this rivalry. And that 14-10 win last year by Indiana was uh, a cornerstone in the renaissance of the football program under Bill Mallory at Bloomington. The first Indy win in 20 years a year ago, and uh, Bill brings his team in here today. Each and every one of them will tell you real quick that we still don't think that the people respect us enough. We intend uh, to do something about that today. Well, if they can, they will go home certainly with a higher margin of respect. Bo Schembechler left Miami of Ohio to come take the job at Michigan, and Bill Mallory succeeded him as the head coach at Miami. So the philosophy of these two men, and they are very close personal friends, very much the same. Kicking game, field position, defense. And run. And run, run, run. And running game. Stoyanovich will kick it off for white-shirted Indiana, one of the strongest legs in college football. John Colasar and Tony Bowles, two speedsters, are deep. Colasar a wide out, and Bowles a tailback. He hammers that ball back into the end zone with that swirling win and a big hole for Bowles as Tony bolts up across the 25 to about the 27-yard line. So the Michigan Wolverines now will go to work. Pretty good field position. It rained yesterday and through much of last night. Has not rained today, but it is still damp down on the rug. And they do play on the artificial surface. Joe Ziegler is in the quarterback position for Indiana, replacing Eric Coleman. Coleman with an ankle problem and just couldn't get it loose enough. Michael Taylor on the first snap gives it to Tony Bowles. And Indiana defense very, very quick. They run to the ball well, and they hold him after a couple of yards. Offensively, Michigan lines up this way. At quarterback, you've got Michael Taylor. Ford is the fullback with Bowles at tailback. The flankers are Colasar and Greg McMurtry. Brown, Doring, Dingman, Vitale, Hussar, and Skrepinak, as Bob mentioned in the opening, Michigan runs an average of about 288 pounds across the front offensively. From the 29-yard line, second down at eight for Michigan. This time it is the fullback, Leroy Horde, getting the ball. He's a junior out of New Orleans, and Dan Bauer, the nose guard, brings him down. Bauer anchoring the three down people of Harris and Schlereth. The linebackers are Saunders, Bates, Money, and Huff. Huff, very active outside. Secondary, Dumas, Ferry, DeWitt, and Bowman, as we told you, not in there. Joe Ziegler is getting the start. And Ziegler is 5'9", 170, is given away height and weight in that secondary cornerback position. Third down now, and three, as Taylor drops the throw. Colasar is wide open on the sidelines and has the first down for Michigan at the 45. And he ran off Ziegler on that play. One of the biggest improvements in this Michigan ball club is the play of Michael Taylor, their quarterback. He has come on very strong. And, and given some soundness and some consistency to this position. Last year at this time, they had 13 intercepted passes. This year with Taylor at the uh, helm, only two interceptions. So Ziegler gave Polisar the big cushion. And they pick up their first down just over the 45. And a hole over the right side. And for the big hole for Horde, it's a foot race. And Leroy is out. into the corner. The linebackers over pursue and Hoare, who is the fullback, not known as a ball carrier, usually the blocker, gets through the line, has enough speed to beat DeWitt. That's Ferry, number 21, into the end zone. Hoare. With a big moment, 54-yard run in his Michigan career, and Mike Gillette is on for the kick. Ken Solomon hold it, puts it down, and it's good. So just that quick, a bolt of lightning from the Michigan Wolverines as they jump out to 
a 7 to nothing lead. Hammers a line drive that skitters down the field and is picked up by Darrell Eddy. And he works his way back up to around the 30 yard line. For a moment, it appeared the ball might have come loose, but no such thing. Let's go back and take a look at the touchdown. Saunders right here, the linebacker, is going to come up. Now, watch Schlereth, 54, is going to come around him. Money is going to take himself out of the play, and watch the fullback is going to come right up in through here. Quick handoff, little game on the weak side. Michigan picks it up very nicely. Hort is off to the races. So Indiana with its first possession now will operate out of the I formation. Dave Schnell at quarterback sets him up with two wide outs and gives the ball to Anthony Thompson who will pick up one yard to the 31. Another look. Watch the hole that's created here. Dingman is 78 and Doring is 73. Now 54, Schlereth takes himself out of the play. Doring, 73, gets a nice block on uh, Saunders. And a nice run. And Vitale took care of Bauer by himself. The Michigan center took the nose guard right out of the play. That's going to be a very big matchup today. Schnell back to throw on second down and nine. Looks and looks and looks and now throws it away. There was nobody available to him. Schnell lining up with the backfield behind him of Anthony Thompson at the tailback position with Cal Miller at fullback. Rob Turner is one wide out and Tony Buford the other. Up front it's Jordan and Jordan catches a lot of balls. Simons, Radke, Fargo, Schrader and Fryer. That's a very good offensive front and they are going to be tested because as Bob mentioned early on the Wolverines will be slanted. Coming at angles more today than they have in any game they played this season. It is third and still ten. Schnell's pass is good, and it's good for a first down. And that was a pressure catch at the 44-yard line by Rob Turner. The sophomore was covered very well by David Arnold, but he hauled it in. Defensively, Michigan lines up with three down people of Brent White, T.J. Osman, and Martin Messner. You want to watch number 60 if you want to watch a lineman really work on defense. The linebackers are Marshall, Grant, Milligan, and Abrams. The secondary, Arnold, Welburn, Murray, and Key. So it's first down, Indiana, on a big third down catch by Turner at their own 44. Michigan leading 7 to nothing on Horde's 54-yard run. Now, a little quick pop to the sideline is not good, intended for Anthony Thomas, who had come out of the backfield. What I see at this particular moment, Bob, are the Indiana people coming out, and particularly the wideouts, uh, or the people who are running the short patterns, are coming out and stopping. They're not continuing to move. They're standing around. Well, they have to clear it out, except for that last play where Turner caught for the first down. The wide receivers have to clear it out for the two backs and the tight end. Indiana's going to throw short, and to do that, you have to clear out with your wide receiver. They go to the shotgun on second down and 10 now. Snell gives the ball away to Anthony Thompson, and Thompson finds a little bit of room up to about the 49. So that's a four-yard pickup. And Bill Mallory told me yesterday about how he planned to go at the Michigan defense. But in this first offensive possession, he's gone to the pass, I think, sooner than he had hoped not to. Third and six. Snell's pass to the sideline. Turner's over there, and he's got it first down at the Michigan 40. So once again, Schnell. Hits his man on the third down play, and uh, it was expected. And we made a very hard point of it at the very outset that Schnell might be the man that would have to step up today and really take charge. Indiana likes to run. In fact, they lead the Big Ten in rushing. Michigan on defense leads the conference in total defense. So you figure that Michigan is going to take away what Indiana does best. That's run, and for Schnell, he's been uh, successful so far. This goes to Miller, the fullback. And Cal Miller out of the split back alignment just hammers it off the right side. 
I think another thing that'll be interesting, and there's another big ball game in the Big Ten with the Spartans and the Illini even now in the third quarter at Champaign. Whether or not the Indiana offensive front can continue to hammer on the Michigan defense, we saw when we did the Miami game here, Bob, the Michigan defensive people get tired. The problem with Michigan, they've lost two games and, and have tied one, is in the fourth quarter they have not played as well. You would think that they do tie. Vince Dooley said that he thought Kentucky was an explosion waiting to happen. Well, it happened. Kentucky beat Georgia 16 to 10. Good run there by Thompson. It's still short of the first down. Third down and short coming up here. Didn't get it. He's going to be just short of the first down. That sounded like Al Trapper. <laughs> I was told that it was Corey McFerrin. <laughs> I thought I thought Al was going to be in a wire. I did too. Yeah. Sorry about that, Al. This is fourth down for uh, Indiana. They've uh, made two first downs so far. They lead the conference in third down conversions. And on fourth down this year, they've made 10 of 11 times they've tried it. So uh, Bill Mallory's ball club will try one more right here. Going after it on fourth and one. And a penalty flag and a whistle stops it. As Indiana that comes to the ball. The Procedure against the Hoosiers. Ron Winter is the referee in today's ball game. And one would think that might change Bill Mallory's mind, and on comes the kicking team. Offense, fourth down. Jim Augustine is the umpire. Headlinesman is Wayne Meese today. Line judge is Ron Bennington. Field judge John Everett. Side judge Bob Colburn. And the back judge is Tom Herbert. It'll be a 53 yard try by Stojanovic, his longest of his career, is 53 yards. Tim Jordan, the tight end, holds the ball, and it's down at the 43. Wind swirls around. It's a big one. Enough leg. He got it. 53 yards. Stojanovic, a hammer of a leg. Makes it a 7-3 ball game, Michigan. That's a high, deep, soaring kick way back. No return off that one. Stojanovic has got a strong leg, as you mentioned, and that uh, not being returned, that's 30 of the last 35 kickoffs have not been returned past the 20-yard line, and that's a great thing for your defense, Keith. All right, first down Wolverines. They lead seven to three from the 20. Taylor gives it to Bowles. The suit this time much better by Indiana. Doug Schlereth, a senior from Biddeford, Maine, made the first hit, number 54 for the Hoosiers. Down and ten for Michigan. Bowles again. Found some room. Ball comes loose as he goes down. Clearly on the ground before the ball came out. And it's just across the 28. Hit by Slareth and Huff. does from Alabama and Penn State play because of their seasons. Look at NC State, knocks off Clemson. Dick Sheridan's got things going in Raleigh. That's a considerable upset. Third down and two, they give it a Bowles. Tony won't get it. Very good defensive reaction by Brad Money and Jim Sams. Sams is in right now at the nose guard position for Indiana, but it was 53 Money that really laid the hit on him and stuck in cold. Both linebackers were there, both inside linebackers. The line was slanting, and Money got over and made the hit. Bates was also there, but uh, Money with the tackle. All right, first punt today by Mike Gillette. Tony Buford will go back for Indiana. Take one, 
He shows the respect for Gillette. He goes all the way back inside his 30. Gillette's going to hit the ball from around his own 20. Got it out of there. Spinning kick. Got a little bit of daylight for Buford, but down he goes. Good coverage downfield by number 90 for Michigan. Keith Mitchell, a tight end. A 35-yard punt. Loss of two on the attempt to return it. 6.46 to go first quarter. Michigan leading 7-3. Fullback, Miller. Made the move as if he was going to go to Thompson, but handed short to Miller, and Miller gets about eight yards on the carry. Our reporter from the field today, Becky Dixon. Dean Boyd is now the fullback for Indiana. They go to Thompson. Thompson up the middle for the first down. Hits the 45 and crosses to the 46. So Indiana, as Bill Mallory said, doing what they have been doing. Hammer at you. Drive block. Bang, bang, bang. To look at the Indiana offense, they lead the uh, Big Ten in five different categories, including total offense. Michigan's defense, as we mentioned, is number one in the Big Ten also, so it's one offense against one defense. First down, Hoosiers. Carlos Marte in a tight end right now, and Snell rolls, sideline, good. Turner, about a nine-yard pickup on the throw. But so far, Bob Greasy, Dave Schnell has been equal to the challenge. He has. He has thrown some good passes, and it's uh, George Ballou, the offensive coordinator, calling the plays in the press box. And I think it's key for a young quarterback on the road to complete some passes early in the ball game. And Schnell has picked up some critical third downs and has thrown the ball very well. Rob Turner has caught three for 34 yards, and you saw that Michigan State has gone ahead of Illinois. Fullback. Dean Boyd, a junior from Zionsville, Indiana, trying for the first down, and he's not going to have it. Notre Dame, number two, shutting down the Air Force wishbone. Duke losing their first last week. Looks like Steve Spurrier's lads may be in trouble this week. Wyoming rolling along undefeated. That's a battle right there for possibly the Southwest Conference title between Arkansas and Houston. It is third and a long yard, close to two. Michigan almost jumped, did jump, did jump. They caught the Wolverines in the neutral zone, I do believe. If so, it'll be five yards offside and a first down for Indiana. Ball is at the 40 of Michigan, first down Indiana. Michigan leading 7-3 on a 54-yard touchdown run of the first possession by Leroy Horde. Anthony Thomas, Thompson working over the left side. And A.T. will pick up about three. Very durable back. Tough guy. Strong uh, running back. Lifts over 400 pounds bench presses. He is not, does not have great blazing speed, but he has a good, uh, good enough uh, quickness and some moves along with his strength to be a very dangerous runner. Second down, seven from the 37 of Michigan. Hill has his tight end wide open, and it's a first down at the 25 of Michigan. Tim Jordan made the catch. Well, the play action fake is going to hold the linebackers. Jordan 86 is going to get a nice release, just slant to the outside, and Snell on a semi roll makes it easier to get the ball to him. Michigan covers deep. They're a conservative defensive team, and that gives that tight end some room. It gives the uh, wide receivers rooms on outs also. Marte back in there at tight end, ships over. Thompson bounces away from the first wave and cannot get back to the line of scrimmage. Very good pursuit by David Arnold, number 15. He got away from Mark Messner, number 16. But it was Messner who forced him wide enough, giving Arnold time to get there. And what happened on that time when the tight end shifted from the right side to the left side, that was Marte, the entire Michigan defense slid over toward the tight end. So they were overstacked toward the tight end. Indiana continued to run that way. And uh, the running back did a nice job just to get back uh, to the line of scrimmage. It would have been a very good time for a checkoff and a little misdirection, wouldn't it? Yes, sir. 
Second down, 11. Thompson up the middle. Just over the 25. So the Michigan plan to slant so far paying dividends. Yes, it is. Uh, it's stuffing them uh, up the middle, and that's what they wanted to do, force uh, Schnell to throw, and he's thrown very well. And he's going to have to air it out right here. Eddie Thomas checks in at a wide out, replacing Buford. Thomas is number seven. Turner stays in. Carlos Marte is the tight end. Cal Miller is back in at fullback. Out of the shotgun, Snell drops. Pass is deflected at the line of scrimmage. He had a very good chance at his tight end running a corner pattern, but the ball was slapped down. And in comes Pete again. He kicked a 53-yarder a few minutes ago. Now he's got a chip shot of 42 yards. Jordan, the only tight end I know of in college football who does the holding on place kicks, down on his knee to accept the snap. Kick is away. Missed it. Missed it right. 2.09 to go in the first quarter. All right, Michigan taking over at their 25. First down, leading 7-3. Give it to Tony Bowles, the tailback. And Tony will have the better part of four yards as he works his way in the middle. Bowles, 6'1", 190, a junior. He comes from Western Michigan, and he's very quick. Checking in at a wide out for the Michigan Wolverines, Chris Callaway. He's the junior out of Chicago. He's also very quick. Michigan's got very good speed at the wide position. Back to the tailback, Bowles. It's the first stack, and then Joe Huff is right there to put him down. They'll mark him uh, just over the 26-yard line, and here's Becky. Keith, Michigan fullback Leroy Horde was injured on Michigan's last offensive position possession. He was hit in the head. It's not certain now as to whether or not he will go back in. Right. The crowd today is 106,104. That is the sixth largest crowd in this great big old saucer. That's a lot of folks. It's interesting, yesterday talking with Bo, he says, Jesus says, if we get 90,000 in here, we're really hurting. He said, <laughs> talking about not filling this place up. So we'll do this every week. Third and nine. Huff after Taylor. Taylor takes off. Penalty flag. I think uh, Michigan's going to get dinged for holding, I believe, number 73. Tom Doring was holding Huff. That's right. So they wipe out that game. Well, Bo's not happy about penalties. He came into the ball game. The third, third most, the third least penalized team. Look to the left side of your screen. 73 is Doring. 35 is Huff. He pulls him down. If, if you pull him. pull him down, now Huff put himself in that situation where Doring's hand was across his uh, chest. That in itself is not a hold, but when you pull the man down, that is the hold. 73. Yeah, that clearly says you've got a grip, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but just the fact that his, his arm was across. Huff's chest is not holding because Huff put himself in that situation. They call that the arm under. When the defensive man puts his arm under, he puts the offensive man in that situation. Third down and 19 now after the penalty. Well, back at the 16 of Michigan. Bowles in motion. Taylor with a shovel forward to Bunch. Bunch has got a bunch of yards. He's got a first down out at the 36-yard line. Time running down at the end of the first quarter. West Virginia winning big today, so it's Florida State. We've got 10 seconds to go in the first period. And Michigan's going to let time run out before they take another snap. 
So we have played 15 minutes at Michigan Stadium, and the Wolverines are leading the Indiana Hoosiers 7-3. It is 7-3, Michigan, after one quarter of play, the Wolverines come back to the line of scrimmage, owning the football first down near their own 37-yard line, and Michael Taylor turns and gives to the fullback, Jared Bunch, and Bunch hammers in there close to the 40-yard line. Leroy Horde, the starting fullback for Michigan, on the very first possession on this play, bolted 54 yards for a touchdown to give Michigan its seven to nothing lead. And then uh, on the kickoff coverage following the touchdown, Horde took a bump to the head and is out of the lineup and has not returned. Second down, call it seven. This is Bowles with the ball. Money missed him. And Bowles gets out near midfield for a first down at the 49-yard line. Brian DeWitt brought him down, but Money had him and didn't get him. Came up with nothing but air as Bowles made the move in the first quarter numbers. Stats are pretty, pretty even. There's not much there. The only thing that you might notice is the total plays. Indiana had an 18 plays and Michigan only 10. The key there is turnovers. Neither one of these teams likes to turn the ball over. Of course, no team likes to do that, but these two teams really talk about it a lot. McMurtry and Callaway wide. Jeff Brown is the tight end for Michigan on first down. Holds the tailback with the ball into the stack. Well, somehow he bounced off that stack and found some wiggling room and got down to about the 44 of Indiana. This is Bunch. He's having a big day, too. So the Michigan fullbacks look like they might be in for a busy afternoon. First down Wolverines at the Indiana 35. Well, it's a big offensive line that is really doing a job on Indiana right now. As we told you, they're way at 288 on the average. Huzar was on that side, 74, and Skrepinek. So doing a nice job up front for Michigan. Much number 32, started the season at that position. There's a penalty flag. And uh, Hort... Uh, Finally got the call at the spot, and now Bunch is back in there having a big day. It's holding against Michigan, and that is the second holding call. Schembechler is really upset at the amount of penalties that have been called on his ball club in the last couple of weeks. As I mentioned, overall this season, they're the third least penalized team in the Big Ten, but the last two weeks, or two weeks ago at Michigan State, 93 yards in penalties. Last week, 82 yards at Iowa, and they're starting off uh, very poorly as far as penalties are concerned here again today. 13.05 to go in the first half. Michigan leading 7-3. Derek Walker is now the tight end for the Wolverines. Polisar to the top of the picture. McMurtry to the bottom. And Bowles with the ball. And number 91 steps in there. Jim Sam. And he takes on Bowles. Brings him down. Sam didn't start the ball game today, but Joe Novak, the defensive coordinator for the Hoosiers, says he's probably our best defensive lineman. He's had some injury problems this year. Just getting back into shape. Uh, says he's definitely our quickest defensive lineman. And he plays nose tackle and around John Vitale that time. Second down and still about 20. Ball just over the Indiana 45. Taylor to throw. Good protection. Ball ricochets off the hands. Michael Taylor. And floats gently downfield. Indiana can't get a handle on it. Tony Bowles was the intended receiver. Number 21, Mark Ferry. Pursuit of the ball. Couldn't quite get to it. The Bulls went down about 10 yards and made a move to the outside and then went straight up the field and Money, 53, may have uh, saved a long completion as Bulls was open in between the linebackers and the defensive backs. Indiana making defensive changes now. They may have 12 people. Dave Bernson's counting them. 
Taylor trying to get away will go down back on the 49 yard line. There was nothing available downfield, and I think Indiana did have 12 people on the field. They made some defensive substitutions, and they, they sent two in and one went out. Illegal participation on the defense, 12 men on the field. That's a key play, too. Indiana had shut down Michigan. It was, a, it was a time for Michigan to kick the ball over, so it was a possession. Big foul. mistake. Possession foul. Get the, Michigan keeps the football. Third down and four, actually. After the penalty. Taylor back. Pass is caught by McMurtry down at the 14-yard line. that ball in front of Brian DeWitts. McMurtry, number one, is an outstanding football player. A lot of speed. Here he is down here at the bottom. He's just going to go down and run a curl. Look at all the receivers over here. He's trying to get them thinking the other way, and he's going to throw the ball to the right side to McMurtry. Looks to his left. It's a curl pattern. First down. Double tied in now for Michigan. Taylor. Good yardage out of it. Gets down about the six. Michael Taylor is an outstanding option quarterback out of high school. And he's still got the moves. There are no outstanding players on this Indiana defense. There's a bunch of uh, hard workers. But Huff, number 35, to the left right there, was a walk-on five years ago. If there's one guy that can make big plays, it's Joe Huff. Twelfth play in this Michigan possession. Second down. Two for a first down. Just outside the six of Indiana. Move. And it looks like he'll have the first down. Joe Huff again on the tackle for the Hoosiers, number 35. First and goal. Two teams with unblemished conference records starting play today. One was Indiana, the other Illinois. Illinois was behind Michigan State a little while ago, 21 to 14. Michigan goes to the wishbone now with Horde and Bunch. Horde coming back into the game. Leroy winds up at the left halfback spot in the wishbone alignment. They give it instead up front to Bunch. Bunch bangs his way down to the one before they can stop his momentum. Garrett Bunch is the bigger of the two fullbacks. He weighs 240. Well, Bill Mallory now pacing a little on the sidelines, realizing his team is dangerously close to going down 14 to 3. Here's where the bulk of the offensive front means so much. Side Bowles drops the ball. Indiana's got it. Can't run it. They've got it. Joe Ziegler. And well, you know, I'm sitting here. They're down on the one yard line. They got all of that beef. 288 pounds. And for the living life of me, I don't understand why in the world it would run a wide play. Well, you got my vote on that. You got a lot of power up front. I don't know why you're going to pitch the ball on a tough pitch like this down near the goal line. The second down, just run them in. You know, you've got that much power up front of you. That's a big turnover. Good play for Indiana. So Bill Mallory's got to say thank you very much. We will take it. Indiana's ball at their own seven. Anthony Thompson breaks it outside and breaks it big gets a first down all the way out at the 28-yard line. 21 yards. That's a 
big play for Indiana. Now they, they were looking at going down. 64 is Ratke who pulls and blocks out on key, the corner. Indiana was looking going down 14 to three. They get the ball and they get a big first down. They get out of the hole. Big turnaround for the Hoosiers. Boyd is in at fullback for the Hoosiers. Bell, the throw on first down. Gets the pressure, gets it off. Pass is caught by Anthony Thompson. And Thompson is down at the 36, brought down by J.J. Grant. I mean, you want to pump up somebody's balloon in a hurry. That's the way to do it, isn't it? Well, what we said at the opening was that this was a young Michigan team going against a veteran Hoosier team. And the thing that we said that they had to avoid mistakes and turning the ball over. They turned it over on the one lot yard line last week in the final minute to lose at Iowa. And they turned it over here in the first half against Indiana. Here the 36, Miller back in at fullback and Miller has the ball. And Miller has the first down for Indiana at the 40. First down at the 40. Snell. Got a little room. This is something Shim Beckler worried about. Letting Snell get loose. Dives for the marker. And he's there. And it looks like a first down. He's hurt. Snell is down on the sideline. He's hurt. Came down, yeah, he came down a little uh, differently than he expected. And just as he was coming down after he jumped, I think he he hit somebody, the defensive man, and came down a little bit different than he was expecting. Bolliard is the punter. Pretty good athlete, senior class, junior eligibility, however. One of the top punters in the country. And he's a good athlete. Give it to Thompson, that's pretty safe. And Thompson goes over the the right guard, then we'll get a yard on the play. Valliard started out at, uh, as you take a look at Snell coming back in, Valliard started out at uh, Ohio State and then uh, went out to uh, Oklahoma or Junior College and led them uh, the Junior College to the uh, Junior College Championship last year. Thomas is a burner. Snell gets it off. Pass is caught underneath by Anthony Thompson. Anderson, inside linebacker, dropping off a sophomore from Glenview and makes the stop. Look at Northwestern. That'll make our director, Larry Cam, happy. We've got a Michigan man hurt on the sidelines. Walliard is in to punt. Remember, he's a quarterback now. 6.56 to play in the first half. It's fourth and about three. Inside the five. You are right there, though I almost a face mask as uh, Tony Bowles went down. But I don't see a flag. He'll have a yard just over the three. It'll be second down and nine. One thing that Michigan does offensively is that they have got strong formation tendencies. That means when a defensive team like Indiana looks at all their game film offensively, they like to run certain plays in certain formations. That's not good offensively. Bowles again to about the six. So it'll be third down and six. Side, but still he is short of the first down. He got across the 10 to the 11, and Willie Bates finally hunted him down. Not a big first down. Well, they didn't make it. No, didn't get there. Oh, close. 
yard short. Well, it's a big possession for Indiana to stop them. But defensively, Michigan's uh, offense ranked number three coming in, and uh, Indiana's defense ranked number four. So it's a big series for the Hoosiers' defense. All right, Gillette standing in his end zone. will hit it around the two or the three, and Buford is back waiting for the Hoosiers, standing way back at his 40. Comes up to the 45, and here he comes. An outside linebacker running full tilt. Clobbered him at the 44. David Schnell looks for the pass. Got him. That's Rob Turner. And first down at the Michigan 22. Rick Welburn and David Arnold were defending. Turner got right between him, and Schnell was on the mark. Well, you got to be impressed, too, with the play calling. Best field position that Indiana has had all day on the Michigan side of the 50-yard line. First down, play a pass for a running team. Receiver was wide open. 7-11, 84 yards for Schnell in passing. Fullback, Miller. And he has his legs taken from him by Mike Teeter, but will get two yards on the carry. Mark Mesner, number 60. See how the uh, top of your screen slants to the inside. As we told you that the uh, Michigan Wolverines are going to be slanting. He didn't make the play, but Teeter, number 91, did get there. When you slant, the, off the defensive linemen kind of give themselves up to let the linebackers make the play. Make it a one-yard pickup, second and nine. Snell keeps it. As he turns back looking for some daylight, he finds Trip Wilbur number three, who then turns him right into J.J. Grant, and down he goes. And Schnell gets up a bit limpingly himself. Uh -huh. Ball is near the 17 of Michigan, and Indiana will spend the timeout at 3.15 to go in the first half. Bolliard is in there at quarterback on third and five for the Hoosiers. Old quarterback going to throw it. Holding call going to come up here, I bet you, against Indiana as Pollard runs the ball close to a first down. Hold on. Here comes the official. Holding Indiana. That's a costly penalty for Bill Mallory's team. They came in the least penalized team in the Big Ten, and that takes him out of a first down. Take a look at it. Teeter 91. That's Fargo, the center. There he is. He's got his left arm hooked around him, and he pulls him right down. It's a nice call by the umpire. Sometimes we give too much discredit to these officials, but that was a, clearly a good call. And so the ball comes back outside the 27th. And it'll be third down and 15. Snell must have sprained that ankle on that option play. That yeah, I think he did. Got up very gingerly. Bolliard stays in on third and long. They're after him. He gets it off, and it is incomplete. And Wilburn comes up to slap it away from 34, Cal Miller. New quarterback comes into the ball game in Michigan. Does they're in a nickel defense. These four plus the strong safety. The strong safety is going to blitz. This man's going to cover for him, and it gives a little bit different read to Bolliard, who just came in the ball game. Michigan disguising coverage is very well. Coverage is there, and the pressure is there. So Stojanovic is in the ball game, and Pete will try this one from 45. He hit one from 53, going the other way. Missed from 42 going the other way. And now this one from uh, 43. 45. A lot of leg. A ton of leg, and it's good. Woo. I mean, that was a howitzer. And it's 7-6, to six, Michigan by one. I sense. Yeah, I, 
I know it's done. I shouldn't be saying this probably, but you almost have the sense that Indiana's beginning to take a little bit of grip on things, don't you? Well, Michigan's not out of it by any stretch no, of imagination, of but and on the road, the visiting team, the longer they can stay in it, I get that same feeling. Tony Bowles. Blazing speed back across the 30 on a short kickoff. And gets it out around the 32. All right, Horde is back in there now in the backfield with Bowles and Michael Taylor on first down. Takes off. Got a block on the corner and goes for a first down. Or close to it. And a penalty flag. Trails the play back at the 34. Flipping. Offense. Repeat first down. Been some surprises today around the country, and Al Trotwick will bring you up to date at halftime. Now Michigan backs up inside the 20. You know, aside from that one long run by Leroy Horde, the Hoosiers' defense has really played, played well. very well. Yep. And as you mentioned, you, you feel that you sense a grip that the Hoosiers are really getting on to this, this game. Well, they should. I mean, they're seniors. They're a veteran group, and they should be able to play away from home. I think back to the uh, road game last year that this same Hoosiers team played against the Michigan State uh, team for the Big Ten Championship and lost that game. That is experience that they're drawing on to here today. Taylor looks up into the bright sun and throws behind uh, Tony Bowles, incomplete forward pass. That sun is coming at an angle over the corner of the stadium. Very bright, popping out of the gray sky occasionally. And Taylor was looking right into it. Long shadows when you look toward their sideline. When Michigan looks toward their sideline. It's great for the receiver looking back, but for the quarterback, it's tough to see. It'll be second down and 23. And Snell now is on his way to the locker room. He may have a problem. Taylor again to throw. Gets it off down the middle. It is incomplete, almost picked off by Mark Ferry, number 21, intended for Tony Bowles. Ferry has really been playing well of late. He's a, he's a fifth year senior who walked on originally, almost had an interception, had one two weeks ago at home against Ohio State. He was almost benched before that ball game, had not been playing well, but. The last two ball games, he has really turned it on, playing very well. 2:05, third down and 23. Huff, little shovel pass gets the ball into the hands of Horde, and Horde is out to about the 29. And Huff came in under a full head of steam. And level Taylor just as Michael released the ball. This is unfair for Taylor because they run it this way because they know Huff will take himself out of the play. Now watch 35 Huff. Taylor is the guy that's responsible for Huff. He does a nice job of taking him out of the play. Nobody has to block him. But Michael Taylor says, hey, I don't want to run that play too often. Indiana now spending a timeout. They have one remaining at 156 to go in the first half. Gillette ready to punt it. Buford back. Likes much earlier today. Two of them were 35 and 44. They have been low line drives too, both of them. Pressure. Hoosiers come, but he gets off a high hanger this time and forces Buford into a fair catch up around his 36 37. It's a 35 yard punt, but it's a very effective punt in that. It forced Buford to call the fair catch. Well, they had a punt block on, too. There was 10 men rushing and nobody back to help for, uh, block for Buford. They almost blocked that they kick. Up close. Now in the clubhouse, Becky Dixon has the story. All right, thank you very much, Keith. I just talked to the Indiana doctors. They say they will examine Chanel at halftime. He is in a lot of pain with that bruised tailbone, and they'll make a determination as to what to do in the second half at halftime. Thank you. From the 35 now, Bolliard brings him up. 148 remaining to play in the first half. 7-6, Michigan. This is Thompson. Goes to the boundary side and gets decent yardage out of it. 
about all you can do for a bruised tailbone is put a little hot pack on it at halftime, put some analgesic on it. Take, a, take an aspirin. A couple tooth. of aspirin and, uh, <laughs> yeah. and lay try down. To, try to go. To look at Indiana's first half possessions. They started uh, on side of the uh, 50 every time except the once when they got on the 44 yard line of Michigan and got a field goal. Second and seven. has good protection is on the money to Thompson Thompson gets away and gets a first down out of it up across the 45 so that's a good effort by Anthony Thompson Thompson came into the ball game with 12 receptions so he does catch the ball and catch it well coming out of the backfield I think it's a good way to use it too because you know they're key on him on the run so send him out in the pass pattern yeah, he's tough one on one Allyard's pass thrown low. Thompson couldn't catch it. And again, the sun, I think, probably is a factor that uh, he had to look back into the bright sun and didn't get it. They don't give him the first down. Well, they do too, but they haven't flipped over the mark. Okay. 45 yard line. Let's see if he goes a little deeper with his pass this time. Nope, stays underneath with it. And again, the ball is low. And again, the ball is dropped by Anthony Thompson. So, <laughs> he's having his troubles on the last two. Yeah, well, Boyer, too, is, 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 is in there. He he's didn't got a shot put to that play. Ball, yeah, it's right. He's not turning it loose. He doesn't want to. Turn the ball over to Michigan, and he knows they're dropping back in zones. And the only thing is open is short. He's throwing the right thing. He just needs to go ahead and throw it. He's sort of pushing it. He's got to wing it. But again, he, he is a fine quarterback, and uh, he can play the game. So it's third now and ten. Intended for Thompson and is overthrown. As Anthony was trying to get in between them, dropping behind the linebacker and in front of the corner, but it doesn't work. And so the Hoosiers now, with 118, are in punt formation. They almost blocked one earlier. Let's see if they go after it again. And they've got 10 up there. Penalty flag. They might have started too soon. That's a good kick. It is a great kick, a spectacular kick. Coffin corner. Marked out inside the one. 54 yard punt. Look at that. Illegal procedure, offense, repeat fourth down. His father was all Big Ten basketball player. Wired went to a Northeast Oklahoma Junior College where he led him to the uh, junior college national championship last year as a quarterback and made the uh, All-American team as a punter. So he can play. Now he's got to try to do it again. Again, Michigan comes, and again, they get pressure, and again, it's a very good kick. High, high kick, and a fair catch by Colasar back at the Michigan 15-yard line. So it's a 45-yard effort that time with no return. And the Wolverines now with two timeouts remaining and a minute and two on the clock, leading seven to six. Michigan State beat Illinois today. Holds with the ball, just tucks it away, wraps both arms around it, and runs it out to about the 22 yard line. Pick up the seven, and the clock is now running. So Indiana and Illinois, the two teams with uh, clean conference records, one has fallen. And coming up to halftime here in Ann Arbor, the other one is trailing by a point. With a half to go. Taylor wanted to load it up and let it fly, but couldn't find anybody, and so he takes off and goes out of bounds. Out at the 27, and that'll be good for a first down. 
leads the Big Ten in passing efficiency. A little bit strange for a Michigan team, you would say, because aside from the Harbaugh a few years back, they've not had a quarterback to really come in and take over. Demetrius Brown was a quarterback last year and had some problems with interceptions. Michael Taylor had the opportunity this year and has really brought some consistency to this uh, offensive team. And this is exactly what they needed. Not have two losses. He's been there. A little more seasoning. This is Bowles. No place for Tony to go. That ought to be the last play of the uh, half, unless Michigan wants to spend the time out. Handing it away. Tony Bowles bolting up the field. That's up to the 37. And time has run out. And so at halftime, the Michigan Wolverines lead the Indiana Hoosiers by a score of 7 to 6. All right. On a chilly autumn afternoon, here we go with the second half. Michigan will kick it off. And we'll see if Schnell answers the call. It's back at the four for Darrell Edding. And the Hoosiers going to get pretty good field position as Darrell comes back up to the 29-yard line. Lance Dutton brings him down. And there's number 11 talking to his coach, and he's coming. Seven to six, one-point lead for Michigan. You know, Keith, you mentioned that they only brought two quarterbacks. Well, their free safety, uh, Brian DeWitts, who is a fifth-year senior, used to play quarterback. In fact, he started five games in 1986, and he may be their emergency third-string quarterback should they need one. Right now, Dave Schnell is out there to see how far he can go with Thompson and Boyd lined up behind him. First down at their own 29. Thompson. Hit in the backfield, number 60, Mark Messner was in there and got a piece of him to slow him down. J.J. Grant put him away. Let's take a look at the Indiana first half possessions. They had a field goal on their second and fifth possessions. Missed a field goal, punted once. Of about two yards, make it second down and 12 now for the Hoosiers. All back near the 27. And Snell to throw. This is a test. Pass is away. The pass is good. And the game is relatively short as Anthony Thompson is well covered. By throwing that ball, and when Ballard was in in relief for Snell, they threw that that play twice. Are they conceding to Michigan that uh, Michigan has stopped Thompson uh, as a running back? I think much? so. What they've said, and last year he only gained 77 yards in uh, like 20 carries, so they have a history of, of not running well against Michigan. They knew that Michigan was a shutting down, so they're trying to get him the football in another way. Third and five. Snell pumps, throws down the middle. Skipped in front of the intended receiver, Tony Buford. Buford was open, and Snell didn't get it to him. When, whenever you have a lower bad back or tailbone, as Snell has had, you, you, you tend to tighten up a little bit. He needs to keep that loose, stretch it out, and if he's going to throw it at all, it's probably going to be short rather than overthrowing anybody. I thought you could tell there that he short-armed it, didn't he? Michigan number 40, John Colasar. All right, Ballard is in the front, and Colasar drops back for Michigan. Just starting the third quarter. Got a little room for Colasar as Boyer didn't get all of it. And John comes all the way back up to the 44-yard line. 31-yard punt by Boyer at that time. So he didn't hit it very well. Came in averaging 45. So it's second down and nine. Taylor options down the line to Bowles. And Tony Bowles will move it up. To about the 48 before Brian DeWitts and Mark Ferry bring him down. It's Joe Huff, 6'1, 225. He only weighed 205 when he came to Indiana, and his mother had to be the liaison between he and Mallory. Said, Listen, if you don't take my son as a walk on, I'm going to send him to Ohio State. Mallory said, Send him up. He earned a letter his first year as a walk on. A lot of hustle, a lot of speed. 
Well, that's a long five. Taylor puts it up deep. Oh, my goodness, McMurtry hauls it in, and number 30, what's his name, 38 got lost on the play. Mike Dumas, the cornerback, absolutely got lost on the play. He was the man that was the closest to the ball. Andre Hall was back there, too. They sort of gave up on it, it seemed, and uh, McMurtry just kept going after it and got it. Well, the protection was fine, as you saw. This is an excellent throw. His foot is on the line, it looks like. You can run that back just a little bit. It looks, it looks like his foot is on the line. All you need is one foot inbounds, not on the line. We're not going to see it from that angle either. All right, this is uh, the big fullback, Horde. And Leroy Horde hammers down to the 15. Let's take another look. One foot inbounds is all you need. Now he has possession. He's on the line. He's on the line. Official is right there. Should have called it. And One looking at his feet. Well, it's tough. It's tough when you have one official there. You got to look at the catch to make sure he has possession, and you have to see his feet. Normally, if there's two, they'll be trained. One will take the catch, and one will take the feet. That time, it was a mistake. Something else to argue about. But it's first down. Michigan at the Indiana 15. And this is goes to the 13. Jim Sams on the tackle, number 91 for Indiana. Sams uh, that time was going against uh, John Vitale, the all Big Ten center for the University of Michigan and did a nice job of getting by him. So Michigan gets a big break on that pass reception. Wolverines leading seven to six. Second down from the 13, Bowles again. Inside the 10, down to the 8. He's got some power. He weighs 190 pounds. He just put his head down and went after it that time and got pretty good gain out of it as he hammered Willie Bates. Michigan has big offensive linemen, but they also pull. Watch 73 and 78. Dingman is 78. 73 is Doring. Watch him as both of them get out of there. Get their bodies around. Walker, number 89, gets a nice block at tight end. You don't see big men moving. Uh, <laughs> they were kind of dancing on their toes coming around. Third and three. Taylor looks to throw it. Now takes off. right about the line of scrimmage. Brad Money and Terry Saunders with a pursuit. Just good defense. Uh, keep nine seniors in that uh, defensive uh, setup for Indiana. They've seen it all before. A lot of them have started for two years, three years, some of them for four years they've started. It's a very veteran experienced ball club. All right. David Weil will snap it. Ken Solom will hold it. And Mike Gillette will kick it. He'll kick it from the 15. 25 yarder is good. And the Wolverines now move it out to a 10 to 6 lead with 10.02 to go in the third quarter. And Mike Gillette will kick it off for the Wolverines as they lead 10 to 6. Darrell Eddings, Rob Turner. And Markel Granderson are the deep people. Back a yard deep in the end zone. It's Granderson, and he's coming. And he made a mistake. He is buried at the 14. Indiana had a return set up to the left side of the field, and the ball was kicked all the way over away from the return. He couldn't get over there, so he did the only thing he could, and that just take it upfield and get as much as you can. Should have left it alone if he had it on the 20. Try to tell an 18-year-old kid that. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Absolutely right. And we never want to forget it, either, because sure. they are 18, 19, 20-year-old slaves. Dave Snell is out there at quarterback. Pitch it to Anthony Thompson running to the boundary side. And 
gets four or five yards out of it. As Eric Anderson brings him down, UCLA in the third quarter not having it so easy in Tucson against Arizona. Well, Notre Dame won rather handily. And Miami is out big at halftime over Cincinnati. I would imagine a little angry. Nebraska continues to roll up points. And so does West Virginia. Second down and six. And it to Thompson, and Thompson loses a couple of yards as T.J. Osman, the middle guard, got instant penetration. On him down. They don't let him bring signs into Michigan Stadium. Well, they were. <laughs> Michigan State beating Illinois 28-21 today, and Francis Bay got a win for the Northwestern Wildcats. It is third down and about seven. Big upset in Kentucky beating Georgia. Well back. Gets it away and overthrows his man. Bob Turner, the intended receiver, Crowd is back into the ball game. We haven't heard much of this 106,000 since that opening possession. Well, Michigan hadn't done anything since that opening possession. They fumbled on the one yard line. They took their first possession of the second half and moved down and got a field goal. Indiana, in two possessions, has done nothing. Two punts. Ballyard's last one was 31 yards. Time. They're still not up to his uh, standard. Colasar moving around, finding some room, picking his way, and winds up at the Indiana 46. Seven yard return after a 36 yard punt and 8.55 to go in the third quarter. They lead 10 to 6. Here comes the reverse. McMurtry is going to set up and throw, and Callaway is wide open. Touchdown! off leading now 17 to 6 with 845 to go in the third quarter and this time Rob Turner a yard deep in the end zone puts his knee down and they'll take it up on the 20. Take a look at the end of this play now Callaway is waiting for the ball DeWitt's number 13 seems to go a little bit late you know he should have gone up with both hands to try to block the vision or at least knock the ball down or if anything else foul him intentionally because the foul in college it goes back 15 yards 15 from the line yards. of scrimmage yeah. that it got him for face guarding probably but you, uh, no, there's no rule in college face guard you put right. two hands up and do anything you want but uh, you know he should have fouled him or something but he just swatted at it with one hand foul would have been the better decision there surely anyway the Hoosiers now trailing by 11 the start at the 20 and here comes Thompson in the middle and two yards at the most 
Well, Michigan's red hot right now. The crowd's back in the ball game. And Mark Messner and John Milligan get that tackle. Well, Messner came into the fray today uh, very active, and he's getting around Fryer, number 79. You know, the Miami coaches, when they played up here a little bit earlier in the year, said this man right here is relentless. He just never stops. He's always in motion, always moving. Second down, eight. The pressure goes down. Sacked back at the 11 by Messner. Messner is the career leader in, in sacks and tackles for losses at the University of Michigan. Michigan. This time just fights. That description was good. Relentless. He just doesn't want to stop. And the coverage was good downfield that made uh, Schnell look twice, and that was enough time for Messner to get in there. Hoosier struggling right now at seven and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Ball is back near the 11. They've got to go to the 30 to get a first down. Got him again. This time it was Alex Marshall coming from the outside. A very poor series for for Indiana, and a great series for uh, Michigan. Bolliard now is going to have to punt the ball from the back line of his end zone. And Michigan has been able to put some heat on him a couple of times today. And you know they're going to go after him here. Good kick out of there. Polisar back at the 47. Over the 35 and down at the 34. 46 yard punt and a 13 yard return. And the Wolverines right now are red hot. Ord and Bowles behind Taylor. It's Ord. Just about the line of scrimmage. The quality of the opposition has always been a very good measure of the quality of a team that right there I think tells you something coming in Indiana had played six teams none of them had had winning records to this point whereas Michigan lost to Notre Dame by two lost to Miami by one and tied Iowa you know by three points they've lost two and tied one so they played the tougher points by far Taylor back on second and nine to the sideline to McMurtry. And right at the 25, out of bounds, a yard short of the first down. Where is Michigan rushing the football? Mostly up the middle and to the right side. They don't run left very often. And they have shut down. Indiana's running game. Wishbone now on third and one with two fullbacks. Bunch joining Hoard and Bowles. And they go to the up man, Bunch, the big guy, 240 pounds, and he has the first down at about the Indiana 23. Jim Beckler said the pressure is on us since we have that tie in the conference play we need to win this ball game conceivably Indiana could lose this game and still win the Big Ten title. Callaway in motion. Taylor back. Looks at Callaway hits him in the middle. Callaway is down to the two. He got lost out there in the secondary, didn't he? He did, and he's right here. Callaway just going to go in motion and just come down here and hook. The wide receiver's going to go to the outside, and the linebackers are going to drop all around him, and it's just going to be a zone coverage, and the ball is right there, and he's just going to do something with it after he gets it. Now he's got one-on-one -on -one to get to the end zone. 
DeWitt misses and he gets down to about the two yard line. Well, it's going to be officially the ones closer there, and this is Horrid touchdown, second of the day. Michigan Wolverines exploding here in the third quarter. And Gillette will try to make it a 24 to 6 lead. Gillette will kick it off with Eddings, Turner, and Granderson back. And Turner's the man in the middle. They don't like him to get it. But now leading 24 to 6, they'll kick it right to him, and they'll kick it so deep. Gillette, with that powerful leg, gives him no chance to return the ball. <laughs> First down. The way they're playing in the third quarter, we ought to test that water. Pass is low, intended for Cal Miller. Well, there's no question that his back has got to be bothering me. It was a simple short pattern to a man that was wide open, and he threw it low. Doesn't look good for Indiana being down 18 points uh, late in the third quarter, and your quarterback has a bad back. Michigan is on fire right now. Everything going their way, and they're making things happen. Indiana they just need some first downs to slow this momentum that Michigan has coming out the second half. Is after him. Snell's pass again low, but picked up this time by Anthony Thompson. But he can only get four yards. Fierce pursuit now by the Michigan defenders. UCLA is now 17 0 over Arizona in the third quarter at Tucson. Bruins going into the game ranked number one. Terry Donahue is not about to get into conversation about that. He's walking around on eggshells. <laughs> Last time they were right number one, they went to Tucson and got beat. They weren't number one very long, were they? Yeah, one yeah, one yeah, yeah. It is third and seven. <laughs> Snell takes a wicked hit. From number 88, Brent White. He gets up and walks away, and he just had to dump the pass to keep from taking the sack and a big loss. You know, Mesner right here, number 60 for Michigan, is just causing all kinds of problems for uh, Indiana. He's come out this second half and just playing great. Fights off the, fr the Friar, number 79, chases him out of the pocket, and that's another punt coming up. And Bolliard. In his last two has kicked, well, he's kicked 31 36, and his last one was 46, and he got all of this one. Good high hanging punt. Goes back to Kolasar, who gets away from two Hoosiers and brings it back near the 40. That was a 45 yard punt. On first down, they give it to Jared Bunch. And the big man hammers his way out. Near the 47 yard line. Second down, three for Michigan. Near their own 47. And this is Tony Bowles to get the first down as he crosses midfield. Michigan scored in their opening possession, then fumbled an opportunity away at the Indiana one. Indiana had two field goals in the first half, and it was 7 6 at halftime. The Wolverines have come out and exploded in the second half, running up 24 points, and they've had field position through the entire possession time of this second half. That makes a big difference. 
right now. First down at the Indiana 49. Illinois lost today to Michigan State, 28-21. And Horde bumped from behind and brought down by Joe Huff. Uh, excuse me, Jared Bunch it is, 32. So 35 got 32. Here's Huff right here, number 35. He's just going to slip inside of 73 during. And if the offense can't make something happen for Indiana, then the defense will have to. Huff gets in there and makes a nice play. But field position, as you mentioned, and that graphic just showed you, has been all in Michigan's favor the second half. They've got three wideouts now on second down and 12. And Taylor's going to put it up. He's had a pretty good day. Shoots one down the middle, tight end, Derek Walker. First down. Across the 40, fumble, and Indiana's got the ball. Saunders comes out of there. Terry was one of those involved in the fight as the tight end had it. As he went down, they stripped it away from him. And so the Hoosier defense forces a turnover. Taylor again puts the ball right on the money. With good protection, Hoosar is 74. Vital is there. It's Walker, number 89 as to whether his knee hit before the ball came out, but it's a he big turnover. Hit. Yeah, it's a big turnover he for Indiana. Hit. If it did hit, it balances out because uh, earlier uh, the call, one of the calls went for Michigan on that sideline play. Tom Bollard is now in at quarterback. Snell is just too tender and too stiff, apparently. So Bollard is in there at quarterback now for Indiana. And that ball is almost intercepted by J.J. Grant. He has not, Bolliard has not yet really hummed the ball with authority. He's one for six for eight yards, and he's been sort of pushing it. They came in only having thrown nine. Let's just go back and take a look. If the knee is down before the ball is out. Well, now the ball is in his arms, clearly, right? The knee is clearly down. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what else you need. Yeah. Yes. The ball, his knee was down before the ball came out. Tough call for the official. Yeah, that's sure. yeah. Very difficult. I would not quibble about that. Second down and 10. Hits it outside. Thompson's got it. Got some help on the corner. And he's going to have a first down for the Hoosiers at the Michigan 49. So a little option action opens it up for him. and take a look what the official was looking at, how fast it happened. Oh, sure. So quick, you can't yeah. scribble about that yeah. kind of a thing. Hey, we roll, That's we for roll, sure. let's go. I think this, this is a good move by Mallory in putting Bollard into the ball game. That's you, first. You, you went three series with Snell in the second half. He's not done anything. He's throwing short. Get your other quarterback in. Maybe you can bring it back. That's their first first down of the second half. Thompson hit behind the line of scrimmage by number 60, Mark Messner. Oh, he's certainly come alive here in the third quarter. He has started playing in the second half. Look at number 60, the left side of your screen. 64 is Radke. He goes right inside of Radke, who is uh, one of their best players on the offensive line. Gets in the backfield, and it's a two- or three-yard loss. Not all that big. He sure is determined. He's quick. Never gives up. Second down and 14. Bollard finally gets rid of it to uh, Anthony Thompson, but by then, Anthony is swarmed by the maize and blue. Michigan doesn't do a lot of things defensively that can give you any cheap plays, any easy touchdowns. They usually play seven or eight men deep in zone coverage, and if they can get a pass rush from their front three, especially with Mesner, then they've got the best of both worlds. Right. They now literally have you outnumbered, don't they? Yeah, Messner is yeah. getting loose up there. They're a little thin in that defensive line, too, with the injury to John Herman. He's out for the year, and also his backup, Manuel. It is third and eight. Bollard's pass is going to be intercepted. There is a penalty flag back where the ball was thrown, and Beta Murray has picked it off. Actually, all Beta had to do was stand there and catch it. And it was thrown right to it. Indiana called for holding. They'll refuse it. Let's take, 
Let's take a look. Take a look right here. Mesner is right here. He's going to come in, but watch Radke, number 64, as he's going to help on uh, Mesner. He knows that Mesner is the guy's getting. Watch him stick his hand out there, pulling down the official. The umpire right there makes the call, and uh, Murray sees it all the way. It's an easy interception. And Murray is still down with that tackle from the back. He got belted pretty well. I think it was Rob Turner that hit him, and uh, Beta Murray with four interceptions is still on the field. Yeah, but that starting uh, point of possession, starting point, been limited, and then add in some sacks on top of it. Uh, much less. This is Leroy Horde carrying the ball, and. Uh, Check in with Becky now to find out what the late word is on Dave Schnell. Well, Keith, word is that he was not taken out of the ballgame because of medical reasons. The coach just, just feel he's too hampered with that injury. Not very effective, not very mobile. Okay. If you've ever had a bruised tailbone, you know what he's going through. It's hard to walk when you got to sew it back. Second down and eight. For the Wolverines. Holtz out, gets up to the 30-yard line. Alabama easing by Penn State, 8-3. to three. That was a thriller down in Birmingham. <laughs> I tell you what, though, Bill Curry will take it. Any way you can get him. Here at Michigan Stadium, nearing the end of the third quarter, the Wolverines blow it open here in the third. It was 7-6 to six at halftime. Now they lead 24-6. Third down and about a foot. And Michael Taylor will go after it. And appear to get it. Does. So it'll be first down for the Wolverines starting the fourth quarter of play. They have owned the second half. I mean, they really dominated that third quarter. They run up 17 points to none for the Hoosiers. Ball is exactly on the 31 yard hash mark. It's McMurtry, the wide man to the bottom of the picture. Involved in one of the big back-breaking plays at that third quarter. Bowles. And Michigan with an 18-point lead and a quarter to go is not going to do anything except beat on it. Look at the uh, total offensive. Uh, Michigan with 349 yards. Indiana only 174 and only 66 yards rushing. Coming into the game, Indiana had averaged 293 yards on the ground. As Bo Schemberg-Beckler said, defense wins championships, and his defense leads the Big Ten. Second and five. Taylor pulls it down. Dives to the marker and he's close at the 42 before Brad Money makes the tackle to amplify on what you were talking about Indiana's rushing game. Anthony Thompson came into this game averaging right at 161 yards per game. Today he's carried 16 times and picked up 54 yards. Yeah, in last year's game against Michigan he had 74 or 77 yards. So uh, Michigan can shut down a good runner and uh, you know Mark. Uh, this is the first game that Indiana has really played anybody with a winning record. I think they're finding out something about their team today. This is Bowles. About four yards. It's going to be up to Indiana now to make a big play defensively. Otherwise, the Wolverines are just going to beat on them and just crunch the ball down the field. Yeah, their defense got a turnover the last time they were on the field, and their uh, offense didn't do anything with it. They need something defensively. Some big plays, some turnovers to get some field position for their offense. Oregon out ahead of Washington in the fourth quarter, 10 to 7. I think it could be a dangerous stop for the Huskies in Eugene. After their all out effort last week at Southern California, where they lost by a point. Pullback. Oh, look at big old Leroy Horde. He's off to the races again. Going, going. Touchdown. Down run 
the day. He got one in the very first possession of the ball game. And now this one. His third touchdown of the day. outruns the defensive secondary his second long run of the day Turner at the seven down at the 24 or five and a penalty flag first down from the 18. Baldridge's pass is away good to Buford, and Buford is out of bounds across the 30 at the 31. The Michigan Wolverines aren't exactly out of the woods themselves insofar as uh, the schedule is concerned. They have played a 10-10 tie with Iowa. They are playing Northwestern next week in Minnesota. Then they finish the season with Illinois at home and then travel to Columbus against Ohio State. I would say that they would have the inside track yeah, looking the at their, yeah. yeah, they got the easier part of their schedule ahead of them, and they would be leading the Big Ten by a half a game after this game if they should win. Give it to Anthony Thompson, and Thompson straight ahead. The one thing that uh, Indiana has not been able to do. They have not blown the offensive front. Has not blown Michigan off the ball today. No, they haven't. And we didn't. Uh, we didn't. Uh, that was no surprise. We didn't anticipate them no. doing that. Michigan can shut down a good running game, and you have to be able to throw. And uh, again, defense is going to win your championships. Second down and eight. Bollard steps away from the pressure. Let's it go. Buford can't pull it in. Tony was being rattled around as the ball came to him, and he couldn't hold it. Indiana, third down and eight from their 33. Tom Bollard out of the shotgun formation. Gets his pass off. Good to Anthony Thompson. He's got to get past the marker, and he does for a first down. Need a couple of big, big happenings. And their defense on that last series looked tired. They looked whipped because Ford uh, just ran through three people in the defensive secondary on the way to his 54 yard touchdown. Thompson slowed down in the backfield and then 95. J.J. Grant is there to bring him down, and here's Becky. a lot of Big Ten coaches remaining on their schedule that will have their attention after this explosion. Back goes Bollier. Throws underneath. Not much on the play as Carlos Marte, the tight end, makes the catch. The Big Ten has been a little bit off this year. I mean, they have not had the uh, good uh, non-conference record. And there's, uh, I think there's one team that, that may be uh, sneaking up on some people, and that is Michigan. Michigan lost early to uh, Notre Dame lost early to Miami and they started off 0 and 2 but if they would have scored uh, three or four more points they would could have won both of those ball games and been right at the top 10 and near the top if they would have won both those they could have been right number one so uh, Michigan is a, is a force to be dealt with in the Big Ten title race on third and 12 ball you've got to throw it deep sideline Turner Rob Turner's had a good day he had some big catches in the first half and he hauls in a big one right there and gives Indiana a first down on the Michigan side of the field. UCLA now putting Arizona away in the fourth quarter leading 24 to nothing. It's a big win for the number one team uh, on the road. 
was Lloyd, Lloyd Carr, the defensive coordinator for the University of Michigan. He's done an outstanding job today, shutting out uh, the Hoosiers. So no touchdowns anyway, a couple of field goals. From the Indiana 42, uh, from the Michigan 42, the ball is rolling around on the field. Nobody sees it, and finally a Michigan man pounces on it. There were two Indiana people there looking for it as Cal Miller lost it, and they didn't see it. Roll right between the legs of one, and Michigan recovers the fumble. Uh, Mark's happier here in the second half than he was the first. Let me show you what they're doing. We talked about them slanting. He's going to slant between the center and the guard. And let's show you what happens when he slants between. We said they were going to try and stop the running game of Indiana by slanting. Well, he gets between him. He doesn't know which one has the ball. Knocks it loose. Let's Bollard go and then tries to. What a great uh, half he's played in this yeah. third quarter. Go back there and the Monk's going to sort him out. This just <laughs> caused him destruction. Jared Monk, 240-pounder, junior, playing with a sore shoulder, but he's had a pretty good day, and he's done some power running all right. Allen Jefferson now checks into the backfield for Michigan, number 28, at tailback. This is another running back that Bo still says is going to be a great player. Well, they have three outstanding tailbacks. All of them are sophomores, Tracy Williams, Bowles, and Allen Jefferson. Uh, juniors, I think. So sophomore. I think. There's your bunch again. Oh, he looks strong today. He had a very strong shoulder. But he certainly has shaken it off. That'll be another Michigan first down. And the Indiana defense now. Very tired. They have been on the field most of the second half. Yeah, those tailbacks are sophomores eligibility wise. Juniors academically. Good solid hit by Joe Huff on Allen Jefferson. Just about the line of scrimmage is where they'll put him down. There's been one player for Indiana that has really had an outstanding game defensively. It's this man right here, Joe Huff, number 35. That is the way to do it right there. I now remember why I'm confused because we haven't listed as juniors because Bo lists them all as juniors. Yes, he does. According to their academic posture. Yep. Does that mean he won't let them play if they're eligible for <laughs> yeah. a year? Uh, <laughs> Second down and just a little more than 10 as Michael Taylor drops. Takes off. And penalty flags as he is ruled down around the 36. The clipping penalty moves the ball all the way back to their own 43. They've got to go down inside the Indiana 33 for the first down. On second down, Michael Taylor to throw the ball. Does. Caught by Brown, the tight end at midfield. Uh, Walker, rather, the tight end. Eric Walker, 6'2", but all of those tight ends are big people. Brown weighs 250. Walker weighs 245. Dybold weighs 250. Keith Mitchell, 230. And a bunch of tackles running around out there. They are big, aren't they? Well, that's a midfield. down and 17. Turner puts it up deep. McMurtry can't run it down. Too far. Way over his head. And that'll bring up fourth down. You know, you might question uh, Michigan throwing being ahead 31 to 6, but uh, Running is what they do best. I mean, if they want to run the score up, they would run. But uh, I don't think there's any problem with it. I think these two coaches are good enough friends to realize that, uh, you know, you're, you're playing now for next week. This game is already won. And Michigan can show other teams that they can throw the ball deep. That's what they're trying to do. Gillette will hit this one from around his own 40. And Buford's back up, standing at his 12 now. Show it, 
come up to the 20. Have the dead run take it. He elects to stay in bounds and works his way up to about the 32 yard line. At 6.45 to go in a game that's going to be won apparently by Michigan. At their own 31. Well, you're getting a lot of work on his throw in now. Hits Buford at midfield. He's starting to throw the ball now with accuracy and some authority. When he first came in in relief of Schnell when Dave was injured, suffered the bruised tailbone. He was very tentative. I think you can see in how well he can throw it, too. Of course, the, there's no pressure on him now. The game is uh, all but over, and he's just out there getting some, some reps. He's 7 for 14 and 82 yards. Just over midfield, first down for the Hoosiers. Throws it a little bit behind Anthony Thompson, and there's a penalty flag. Face mask, offense, repeat first down. Back comes the marker. Way back inside the 36. Indiana brings the ball back to the 36. 15 yards. Whew, that hurts. Well, Indiana had not won a ball game here in this stadium since 1967. Well, another year is going to go by. On first and 25, Rob Turner makes the catch. He gets back to about the 47 before he is brought down. Bill Mallory now is going to have to go home and. Hope he can heal his quarterback and regroup. Regroup, but uh, don't, he shouldn't feel like a, a lone ranger. There are not many teams that have beaten Bo Schembechler. In the 20 years that Schembechler has been here, he's lost only eight Big Ten home games. That's quite a record. It would not appear there will be any particular movement in the top ten. The rankings this week. Volume's pass, again, thrown to the sidelines. Anthony Thompson gets it and goes out of bounds. He's going to be short of his first down, so it'll bring up third. West Virginia club, they seem to rise up against the old foes and let them have it. Okay, BC are licking today. Michigan State up ending Illinois with Iowa beating Purdue. Things are starting to sort out. You know, you talk about Mallory. He has won everywhere he has gone. He was at Colorado and, and won. He was at Northern Illinois. He has turned this program around. And, uh, he was the last coach to take a uh, team from the Big Eight to the Orange Bowl, other than Nebraska or Oklahoma, uh, Oklahoma. On third and seven, throws it under to Thompson, and Thompson fights his way for what appears to be a first down very close to it. Well, Anthony Thompson still got the fight, even though uh, his team was sort of overrun by a herd of Wolverines in that third quarter. It's, it's frustrating too for these Hoosiers. They feel like last year they didn't get any respect when they beat Indiana, when they beat Ohio State and Michigan in the same year for the first time uh, in a long, long time. They felt like Bo came back here and says, well, we didn't play well and it was our fault. We did this and we didn't that. And they felt like the Hoosiers felt like they didn't get any respect. Well, that's just the way Bo is. Uh, but uh, they were looking for some respect when they came up here. Well, a tough run by Anthony Thompson right there. But this is not going to decide the uh, Big Ten championship. Uh, it, it will go a long way towards it, but Michigan still has to go the rest of the season, four games, and not lose a ball game or tie one. And uh, if they can do that, th their destiny is in their own hands. I think you can tell by uh, when Bo takes off his headset, it's kind of like Red Auerbach lighting a cigar. <laughs> That's true. Well, I remember the Miami game when he got a grin on his face. He hadn't taken off his headset, and Miami cut loose with that juice a lot of points to beat him. 31 to 30. Well, he's been 20 years at, at Michigan. He's the winningest active Division I coach, and he's fifth all time. 
Well, he's also the athletic director, and he's going to get into that in time. And uh, one of the things he's going to have to consider is a recent proposal that apparently was stimulated by Frank Burroughs at Arkansas that a 12th game be added to the college team schedule. Here's a pass for Buford, overthrown and out of bounds. And I think, I think it is worth hearing what Bo Schimbeckler's reaction is to the proposal for adding a 12th game to the collegiate schedule. This is what he told me. The only reservation I have, you know, there's a, there comes a point where we just can't continually tax these youngsters who are uh, trying to pursue a degree and to play football at the same time. When I first started coaching, we played nine games. The athletic departments got in financial difficulty, we went to 10. Uh, once again, years later, they got in financial difficulty, we went to 11. Now everybody's in financial difficulty again. Are we going to go to 12? Uh, somewhere along the line, we've got to uh, draw the line. Bolliard running the ball for Indiana is caught before he can get out of bounds and pulled down by Mark Spencer, who shows up at a linebacker position for the Wolverine. Both sounds a lot like George C. Scott. I mean, made a lot of sense in what he was saying, also. Disciplinarian, a very tough coach. He has uh, done an outstanding job with his program. You know, he, he gets boys and makes men out of them. And I think that's the same kind of program that Bill Mallory has on the other side of the field. Very good disciplinarian and uh, has the whole picture in mind. Fourth down and four. All you're getting good protection throws and it is incomplete. And the ball will go over to the Michigan Wolverine. Anthony Thompson trying to pull it in in front of Tim Williams and couldn't do it. So at 2.53 to play, this one seems in hand. One of the scores that you saw a little while ago involved the Wyoming Cowboys as they rolled up some points today. They have the longest regular season winning streak right now. The Wyoming has won 17 in a row. And Randy Welniak today threw for three touchdowns and ran for another, and they won 61 to 18. Demetrius Brown is now in at quarterback for Michigan as they take over from their 27. And he hands the ball to Allen Jefferson. And he just runs it off the right side and gets the clock going. And at this point of the game, there is very little reason for the Hoosiers to be spending their time out because this issue is resolved. Tracy Williams is in. It was Tracy who had the bad luck last week to fumble the ball on the Iowa one. And they had to settle for a 10-10 tie. Brown gives it to Williams. A little confidence building here. He runs in heavy traffic. The MVPs for Chevrolet coming up in a moment. Chevrolet donating a thousand dollar scholarship in the name of each of the players to their respective universities and we'll announce that at the conclusion of the ball game as we move inside two minutes to play. So Indiana getting roughed up today goes home to play a rough customer next week the Iowa Hawkeyes. We were winners today over Purdue. Illinois went down so that leaves Michigan in pretty good shape as Brown whips one and it's caught by Tracy Williams and he's across midfield to the Indiana 48 yard line. A crowd of 106,104 watching at homecoming weekend and a penalty flag thrown on the play. I don't have any problem with this at all. Uh, Michigan's up 31 to 6. Demetrius Brown, the backup quarterback, is in, and you're throwing the football. And I, I, that's fine. If, if something should happen to Taylor where he goes down, your backups have to be ready to play. And I think the coaches on the other side of the field understand that, especially these two who are good friends. And uh, as Bull told us, you know, we even made vacation together in the offseason. Well, there's always <clears throat> some squawking, you know, when it, there's any hint of somebody running up the score. But at the same time, as Bob says, you must prepare your own people. On first down, 
Brown gives it away to Chris Horn, who's now in at fullback. He's a junior from Huntsville, Alabama. Picks up short yardage on the play. And we are now at a minute to go in the ball game. Well, we've run down most of the scores. We had Al Trout wig in Hawaii a week early. Which he probably Let's hope he has a nice trip next week. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we won't let him go now. Yeah. <laughs> ball carried by Alan Jefferson. Swarmed is Alan Jefferson carrying the ball and rolled down short of the line of scrimmage, but no big deal. It's a seasoning process now as uh, we look at the Big Ten standings. After today's action, Michigan on top. Iowa has two ties, Michigan only one. Indiana now and Illinois and Michigan State all have one loss. This will be the final snap of the ball game. Counting it off, and the Michigan Wolverines have defeated the Indiana Hoosiers by a score of 31 to 6 to move atop the Big Ten Conference standings.